Good morning, everyone. Good morning, good morning. So good to see you. I missed you all last week. So many things going on here lately. Good morning, everybody. I should probably make sure. Let's see, until the end of this event. Good morning. Where is everybody at today? It got warmer here and now it is like super rainy this week. We've got like days and days of rain. So all of our like fun getting out and doing stuff <laughs> kind of got, kind of got a kabush, but that's okay. Cause we're doing all of our minimizing and cleaning. So it gives me the perfect opportunity <laughs> to focus. I'm tackling the kitchen today and I'm so excited. I've been like dying to get all of this stuff done. Let's see. Hopefully this is working okay because our internet has been so wonky and weird. Make sure I have everything on here. Hey, good morning. How are you guys? You know, it's so funny. We were just talking about um, Olivia was pulling out games last night. She pulled out a ticket to ride. <laughs> and I was like, oh, it's been a while since we played that. We were talking about you guys. Hey, yes. Oh, look at Missouri. Welcome. Hey there. Yeah, we, um, we, I feel like life sometimes just comes in these waves that you're like holding on for dear life. <laughs> That's what it feels like lately. Hey, up in the Pocono Mountains. Hey, Mary, how are you? Hey, Brenda. I'm trying to still drink my protein coffee. I had, um, we had just so many different things. I am so excited over this home, like life reset, redesign. It's something I've wanted to do for so long. And I feel like I've done it in like bits and pieces. Um, Oh, Happy Valley. I love that, Tiffany. <laughs> love to all come visit Happy Valley. Janet, no problem. Yes, we will get over that. We or get over that. I was just reading your message. We will cover that here. <laughs> um, I've wanted to like severely um like just go through all the things for so long. And I feel like I've done it in little bits and pieces, but taking this challenge and being like, nope, like, I don't know if y'all saw today's video, but like pictures off the wall. Like everything is so clean. My brother um, got home last night and he walked into the house and he was like, what did you do? <laughs> what is different here? And I was like, what are you talking about? What did I do? And then my husband walked in and he was like, yeah, when are the pictures going back up? And I was like, dang it. <laughs> I was trying to, I was trying to trick my brother and see if he could figure out <laughs> how, uh, what exactly I had done in here, but it is so nice getting it all done. I'm going to tackle the kitchen today and Try to get all these pieces ah oh, put together. It'll feel so nice. Um, yeah, I know we were cracking up last night. We loved playing Ticket to Ride with you guys. And um, it's nice now because Olivia, our youngest, now that she's getting a little bit older, uh, I feel like we can play games again a little bit better, right? It's always hard when you've got like a little because they kind of just goof <laughs> everything up. <laughs> and you're like, okay, please let us play the game. <laughs> so we're so excited. Hey, from South Africa. Hello, hello. Welcome. <laughs> yeah, I um, I'm so excited just to try to get the stuff, get the stuff done. I feel like especially life has been just so heavy lately. Um, and I'll update you guys here on that. We'll give everybody a few minutes to get on. But I feel like life has just been so heavy lately. And there's so many big changes coming up. We've had so many big things going on here lately. And um, I'm like, man, to get all of this stuff just like stripped out, cleaned up. And, and another thing is I feel like it's been hard trying, just being honest, I think it's been hard trying to balance. Like we want the YouTube channel to grow, obviously, because that, you know, directly provides an income for our family to continue going on and doing things we're doing. But it, because we believe in what we're doing, like I feel strongly that there's like the cheap, Christian nonsense that's out there, especially for women. And then there's like the 
very superficial. I live in a, you know, million dollar home. Everything is gorgeous, like homekeeper type stuff. But I'm like, where's the stuff for us real people <laughs> that like want to dig in deep as far as our faith, but like don't live in million dollar homes? Like where's that stuff? And so I believe in it. And I think there is such a, a great purpose in it. But I feel like trying to balance those things has been really, really difficult between, you know, what does well and how know stuff grow but yet what feels I don't know um it, it's so anyways it's been quite the struggle around um I just I've been wanting to do like deep dive life redesign clean everything out change it all up like kind of as I get stuff done I put videos out you know type of a thing and I've wanted to do that for so long and so I don't know I'm excited doing it because I'm like ah this is something that like I want to do <laughs> like I'm I'm so excited to do this and so just bringing you guys along for the process just fits so well and so anyways that's my big story to say how excited I am to be doing all this and so thankful I am truly to each and every one of you to have you here and joining me and um it's nice, right? It's nice knowing you can get on and you have your friends and you can like say, Hey, and connect and do all the things and lift one another up. And, um, if it, you know, seeing, I think there's many of us that are kind of in that boat that we're like, we could use a something we could use. Hey, Jennifer and welcome. <laughs> You're here to join the collective. That's amazing. Um, to join in on this, right. And to get the, the resources and the things and to, you know, build one another up and be there to encourage one another and lift one another up, I think is just something that is, I think probably all of us could use a little bit more of that in our day-to-day -day lives. So that's a, a wonderful thing to get to get to have and get to, you know, be together in. So anyways, um, I think that's, that's special. So we'll go ahead and open up. We're going to read another Psalm. I'm finishing my protein coffee here real quick. Hey, Stephanie, good morning. We will read a psalm. I've got some updates and prayers um, um, that we'll kind of get into once we open up uh, with prayer. And then you guys continue to say, hey, introduce yourself. Where are you watching from? And leave any of your prayer requests here in the chat so that we can do that. Yeah, and, and I love decluttering um, because I think life is worth living and I don't want to spend all my time tending to stuff and managing stuff and being overwhelmed by stuff. Like, I don't want to do that. Hey, Natalie, you're not far away at all. Is it rainy for you guys too? We've got like a rainy, cozy day here in the mountains, but um, less is more. Absolutely. And it's one of those things that we just, we have to do it periodically, right? Like it's not a one and done. It's something you just have to continue to do. And I feel like for us, I've kind of let stuff build because it was on my list of like, ah, we could do a whole series and go through the house room by room and like do the whole thing. Like, I think that would be so fun and encouraging. And so like, I've kind of let it go and let it go because I wanted to do that, but I just never got around to it. So now I'm like, man, we're doing the whole house. We're just going to go for it. I'm going to bring you all along for the whole process because, <laughs> but then I think at the same time, it's also replacing it with like the beautiful things. Like, I love setting a beautiful dinner table. Like I love, you know, sitting outside and enjoying a cup of coffee and listening to music. And you, you know what I mean? Like there's so many of those things that I love, you know, walking around the property. We take our sheep and our great Pyrenees out walking every night, you know, little things like that, that I think are just so beautiful, but I think they're just as important as clearing out the stuff and then filling it with the things that matter. Um, and I think it's important that we show both of those. So it's not just, you know, one thing we're focusing on, it's, it's the, the connectivity of it all. That's amazing, Mary. Yes, it does. It feels so good. Last night when I got done with the living room, it was like, oh, like we sat there and we watched a little bit of TV last night and we had a very hectic past couple of days. And so we were just kind of like, oh, I'm so, so drained, but um, it was so nice to, sit in there and like our walls are all bare, which I can't wait to like rebuild and like put all my stuff back up again, like the things that we are keeping, but just, it was so clean and so fresh. And like, I just redid our closet a little bit ago. So like, I have just what I need in there. Everything else is gone. Like, ah, oh, it does. It feels so fantastic. 
<laughs> so yes, I'm right there with you. Um, let's go ahead and we will get started. We're going to read Psalm 20 today. So this is our 20th prayer gathering, which I think is super duper cool. And um, we'll go ahead and get started here and update everyone and be lifting everyone up. So it says, um, again, here in Psalm 20, this is another Psalm of David. It says, in times of trouble, may the Lord answer your cry. May the name of the God of Jacob keep you safe from all harm. May he send you help from his sanctuary and strengthen you from Jerusalem. May he remember all your gifts and look favorably on your burnt offerings. May he grant your heart's desires and make all your plans succeed. May we shout for joy when we hear of your victory and raise a victory banner in the name of our God. May the Lord answer all your prayers. Now I know that the Lord rescues his anointed king. He will answer him from his holy heaven and rescue him by his great power. Some nations boast of their chariots and horses, but we boast in the name of the Lord our God. Those nations will fall down and collapse, but we will rise up and stand firm. Give victory to our king, O Lord. Answer our cry for help. I love that. All right, let's open up in prayer. Get going here um, as my watch is going off like crazy. Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this time to come together, to be here with one another all around the world, Lord, and just lift one another up united in your spirit, Lord. We thank you for each and everything that you're doing in each of our lives, Lord, for the struggles, the hardships, but the praises as well. And we just ask that you will continue to guide us and refine us and to show us what truly is your desire and design for our lives, Lord, as we want to to live in everything, not only making the most of the, the life you've given us, Lord, but making sure that our investments are truly in the things that are eternal, that we may have our, our priorities and our, our focus in line, Lord, and be doing the things each day that, that yes, that, that matter, that count, that have an impact, but also just soaking up all of the lovely things that you put all around us, Lord. We thank you and praise you for all the work you're doing in our lives. And we lift up all of these requests here today, Lord, that you will just continue to work in the lives of those around us, that you would pr provide that, that healing, provision, guidance, and just repentance that, that we're praying over in all these matters. We thank you and praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Yes. Amen. Sorry. Of course, my things went off as we were. I feel like no matter what I do, something <laughs> still goes off. Okay. So I do have a few updates real quick, and then we will get into, um, I'm going to pull up this here because I just got an update. Um, uh, I want to thank you all for praying for my mother-in-law. Um, we, any of you have been around YouTube for a while, you guys know, because we used to have her here with us, but um, we've cared for her for years and years and years. And then um, two years ago, my brother-in-law moved her to Texas with him kind of to care for her in this final stage. Um, she is um, 80, turning 81 next month. She has Parkinson's and Alzheimer's. And so it's a lot of pieces and a lot of things, obviously, um, dealing with all of that. And so um, her birthday is coming up here in a few weeks. And so we were so excited. My husband and I were able to get a trip planned to go out there and see her for her birthday. Um, she hasn't been doing great, but hanging in there, we really wanted to get an opportunity to see her kind of one last time. Well, she still had a little bit of, you know, at least she recognized us when we called her and things like that. And so um, we just talked to her Thursday evening. We video called with her. My brother-in-law goes over there and video calls us. And we had gotten to see her and tell her about our trip and talk to her. And she got to see all the kids and stuff like that. And she was super excited. And then um, Saturday, we got the information that um, she had had a major stroke and was headed to the hospital. Um, and so she's been in the hospital ever since. And um, no improvement. So there's it's pretty much just nothing right now, you know, so she's, she's there, but there's no, um, nothing's really firing or, you know, coming on. And so, um, my brother-in-law met with the doctors, um, this week and they said, usually, you know, within a week they start to see 
something, you know, something happened and we're not seeing any improvements at all with her. So um, she is going to go back to, you know, we were given the opportunity to either let her go back to her nursing home and give her a little more time to see if anything happened or to go straight to hospice. Um, so as a family, we've decided to give her a little more time. Um, we're going to, you know, she's, she's alive, you know, she's doing stuff. She just, you know, nothing's really, nothing's really firing. And so we're going to go ahead and, and give her, give her a little bit of time. Um, my husband and I will be traveling out to Texas to um, meet with the family um, and, you know, see after a few weeks kind of where we're at and if, you know, it's time for hospice and kind of figure out what the next steps are. So just prayers for, for her and for the family, you know, for my husband, this is incredibly hard. Um, she's been a second mom to me since I was 14 years old. So, you know, we're, we're all very, very close. Um, the kids, of course, this is very difficult for them going through all of this. And so just prayers all around would be greatly appreciated. You know, we take the greatest comfort in knowing that she loved the Lord with all her heart and, um, knowing, you know, again, like we're told in the letter to the Thessalonian church, right? It's, we don't weep in the way of those who have no hope. And so we're so thankful for that, but it doesn't make the process uh, necessarily any easier going through all of that. And so um, just prayers for the family would be greatly, greatly appreciated as we continue to get through um, kind of a hectic uh, foreseeable future uh, with all of that. Um so um, I'd appreciate that. And then just we've had some some other just real deep, difficult family things kind of going on over here. And so just if you think of the family and want to send your prayers over, it's been a lot to try to process through and get through and, and get going. Right. It's when it rains, it pours and you get all the stuff going on. So. Hey, Natalie. Yeah. Perfect day to do that. I'm going to be doing my kitchen after we finish this live. So I'm right there with you. Um, so. Lots of prayers for that. Um, I wanted to update you guys on the Marceau family. Um, Larry had um, the big accident a uh, bit ago with a 500 pound wrecking ball falling on him from about 90 feet up in the air. He has been in hospitals ever since. Um, he had been pretty much in the ICU. They moved him out for a little bit. They've actually moved him back to the ICU. Um, it looks like that there is still some infection going on and he does have pneumonia. So they're keeping him at the large hospital still and, um, continuing to treat him and, and move through all of that. But um, we want to continue to pray for Larry and for Kay, obviously, as she's, you know, there by her husband's side and trying to do all this and juggle. The kids are back at home, you know, about three hours away. She's not getting much help. She's trying to balance all of the things and do all of the stuff as you can imagine, you know, how difficult that is. So we want to just continue to keep praying for for Kay and Larry and for their children as they're trying to work through, really just praying that whatever this infection is that he keeps dealing with, just praying that, you know, they would finally resolve that. They've had him on antibiotics. They've been trying different things and they just can't seem to, to kick this, whatever it is. So um, appreciate y'all's prayers for, um, for Kay and for Larry Marceau and for their family as they're kind of going through the ringer with all of this. Um, we want to continue to pray for Sabrina and her family. It is actually Sabrina's birthday next week. So um, you guys will have to make sure to wish her a happy birthday on Monday. We're so thankful to them and everything that they do to keep everything, you know, heavenly minded home running. Um, we've been sharing with you guys how badly she needs to get moved out here. Um, she saw her doctors again and um, basically she's having some, they've tried doing some treatments and she's having really bad, you know, reactions to things, but she is in need of brain surgery. And she also has a condition with her heart going on. And so getting out um, here is really, really important. Um, her brain is literally swelling out of her skull, which is like terrifying. So um, she's got to, to get out here and um, get going. Um, we're kind of putting those pieces together. And now the last piece that they're like this close to is the literal moving their entire family across the country. And so um, I know so many of you reached out and you asked for ways you wanted to to help and we appreciate y'all so much. And so any of you can go, I know a handful of you have already and we just appreciate y'all more than you could ever know. Um, Sabrina and her husband are probably the 
kindest, most humble human beings I've ever met in my life that would never want to ask anyone to go out of their way. Um, and so I'm going to, so many of you wanted to know how you could help. And so I said, absolutely, we can absolutely facilitate that. And so if you guys go to heavenlymindedhome.com, you can scroll down and there is a spot where you can make a donation to the ministry and 100% of everything we're receiving is going directly to their family to help them in their move across country, the gas, the food, right? All the pieces to actually, you know, literally get out here. And so um, I know so many of you asked how you could help. Um, and I'm hoping we can get some podcasts out soon. Poor thing. She's got these throbbing headaches as her brain is literally swelling out of her skull that um, make it very difficult for her. And I completely, I, you know, I can only imagine how <laughs> how hard that is to try to get through your day when you feel like your head is literally exploding all day long. So um, I'm excited to put all that stuff together. Again, you guys can go over to um, Heavenly Minded Home and do that if you would like to um, to help them as they're they're getting out here. And I'm so excited. There's just they're so loving and so excited to help just continue to pour into all things heavenly minded home and just make it a better space for people that you guys have resources and things that you can use that all our families can be blessed by. And I really appreciate them for that. So I'm very, very thankful to have them, but we're getting, we're getting closer and closer and closer. It seems I was hoping she'd be here by her birthday so we could throw her a big birthday party, but I don't think she's, <laughs> I don't think she's gonna make it by Monday. Um, but we'll be, we'll be ready regardless. <laughs> we want to pray for Janet. She tested positive for the flu and COVID yesterday. So when it rains, it pours, huh, Janet? Um, she's actually watching the declutter videos and have been inspired when I get over this illness to reorganize. Isn't that nice sometimes though? It's kind of nice to watch somebody else do it. You're like, okay, as soon as I get better, right? Like at least mentally you're thinking through it. And then once physically you start feeling better, you're like, oh, I know what I'm tackling. So praying for you, Janet. Um, we went through a couple periods of pretty intense sickness here lately that were not fun. And so I uh, definitely get that feeling of just being like, oh, right. I just let Lord, let me get through this. So praying for you that you get feeling better. And Janice, yes, we want to be lifting you up. Um, we know that you were getting ready to try to finally, right? I know when we were praying, we were going and trying to get the first stages done of like getting all this diagnosed and everything. And now you finally have surgery next Wednesday. So you're going to go and get um, the... The hernia repair and a magnetic anti-reflex put in. That's crazy. Recovery is rough. Okay. 200 miles from home to um, get to where you need to go to have surgery. And then, of course, the recovery process after that. So absolutely covering you in prayer, Janice, as you guys go through that. And that's a lot of stuff. But I am praying that this will be that well-needed you know, thing to finally get you some of that relief. Because I know it has been so rough for you for a little while now. Let's lift up Stephanie, um, her family, her husband, children, grandson. Um, your son has still not been able to see his son. And that's so difficult when you see just a strife like that within families. And so praying for all of you just to remain faithful, right? One step at a time, knowing what you can do and what you can't do and just working through, you know, all of that is so difficult and just praying for her heart to be softened and to see, to see truth and, and righteousness and all of it. That's so difficult. So absolutely, Stephanie, continuing to pray for you guys. Um, also, I appreciate your guys' prayers for my husband. He um, had a bunch of imaging and stuff done at the hospital this time last week. I've got some in my wall. Um, and uh, he, um, he had a bunch of scans and stuff done. And so he had massive um, kidney surgery last year. And it looks like he still has um, some stones in his kidneys. And that's why he's had the pain. They actually think they are the original stones. Um, some of the little pieces, he had like a massive boulder, like a golf ball size kidney stone that they removed. Um, but there's a couple little pieces kind of floating around in there that are still um, causing him dis some discomfort. And then he's also got something going on with his liver. So we're pretty sure we know you know, what it is. Now it's just working through the process, which I'm thankful. Um, I'm thankful that we know what it is, but now it's just working through the process to get him that. So I thank you all for your prayers that we were able to get the imaging done. They got great images. We know exactly what's going on. And now we can start moving towards the, the healing process for him. So um, I forgot to update you guys on that. And I thank you all for 
for your prayers and all of that. Um, Cynthia, can a Christian do liposuction? I don't see, I mean, it's not like there's a reason, you know, why you can't, I think more so it would be looking at the, the root of the why, you know what I mean? Like, is this just a cosmetic thing that it's like a superficial thing? Is it because, you know, you haven't been, I mean, I think it's important that we do take care of our bodies and live a healthy, you know, life. I mean, we shouldn't be gluttonous. That is very clear in scripture, but yet it's so normalized in our world today, right? Nobody even bats their eye at gluttony anymore. Um, So I think there's a, there's a lot, you know, I think the, the root of it is a little more important than just the superficial, you know, it's not that liposuction is sinful and you can't do that, but why, right? What's the root? What's the purpose? What's the, the reason for this? Um, Leah, absolutely. Hello there in Idaho. It's so pretty in Idaho. Um, let's lift up her marriage. Her husband has ventured on a spiritual journey of ancient religions and astral projection that he calls meditation. Oh, wow. That is definitely terrifying when you see there's so much new age nonsense that has moved into even just mainstream everything these days. So absolutely praying for, for him and for your marriage again, that you continue to stay strong. Um, half truths and stolen stories. Yeah. It's, it's, that's the arguments people make. It's, it drives me crazy because it's so like, it's just so ignorant. You know what I mean? It's like, you can never tell anyone that because no one believes you, you know, like people and they say, Oh, well, you know, I only read even people, you know, within Christianity, it's like, KJV onlyism because like, oh, well, the the Bible, other Bibles verses were removed. And it's like, no, they weren't. Like, what are you talking about? You understand that where they came from and how they came, like, there's so much more that goes into it. It's just such an ignorant statement and like that half truth. And what's a half truth? You know, like what in there is a half truth? Let's break these down. You go into them and you're like, these are the most. And so I think it is, especially in our marriage. It's so important, right? Peter tells us that without saying a word, you can win them by your conduct. That's so important, you know, that you stay strong, that you keep growing these things that he's, you know, learning in, you study them from, you know, let's, let's get into the full truths, you know, like, so not that you're going to argue everything, but you have a defense, you have your truth, you know, you keep growing in your discipleship. So that way, you have that solid foundation that you're standing on. Absolutely. We'll be praying for you. Um, I want to see, let's see Homestead on the Delaware asked, what is your opinion on people reading the book of Enoch? Enoch is fascinating. Um, I think that it, I wouldn't just recommend it to anyone and everyone, because I think again, if you don't really have that solid faith, it's not in the canon for a reason. Um, I think uh, first Enoch is a lot more solid into second and third and whatever. And then there's a lot of, there's a reason why it's not in the canon Um, because there are issues, there are discrepancies, there are things that have been tampered with and, you know, can't be held. Um, I think there's a lot to learn from Enoch Um, and our, you know, we've studied it and um, done all of that, but I think just, again, having a solid foundation, knowing that it's not in the canon for a purpose and a reason, and being able to discern through it as, especially in the later ones, there there have been things changed and altered. Um, So you don't want to like hold them as, you know, gospel truth because they're not. Um, But I think there is a lot to learn in it. And I, I know for us, when we studied through it, there's so many things that were like, that makes so much sense, right? Like so much came together. Um, But I wouldn't necessarily be like, hey, if you don't have a solid foundation and strong discipleship, sure, run off into the the extra, you know, canon of of scriptures, you know, like eh, probably not where you want to go. But it's a fascinating study. Absolutely. Uh, Stephanie, let's pray for the healing of her husband's back and for her left foot. She's in a lot of pain and also pray for healing for miracle for my daughter to be healed from MS. That is so difficult. Absolutely praying for whatever it is that you guys are facing, be it that the Lord heals it, that he provides something, um, you know, to 
help you through it. And that at the end of the day, he's glorified in every situation, you know, that you guys are going through, absolutely praying for you and that he will continue to strengthen and provide for you all as you go through, you know, these things that are so difficult. Um, Susie, 3 a.m. Oh, wow, Susie, you've got to be super tired. You have an old injury, 50 years tonight. The chronic pain is kicking in. It's really bad. Meds relieve it slightly, but not much. Please pray God will heal this. Absolutely, Susie, praying for you. I think it there's so much chronic illness that we see today. Oh, we've actually been talking about that with all the stuff going on with my mother-in-law. Like modern medicine is great in an extent. And then you look on the other side sometimes and you're like, oh, I don't know. But praying for you, just, you know, any relief that you can get, be it, you know, life changes, um, you know, diet changes, just activity change, you know, whatever it could be that you would really just start to find some ways to um, alleviate um, some of that. If that the Lord's going to, right, it's part of living in a sinful fallen world. We have our things we have to deal with, but looking for ways that the Lord, you know, will reveal to us. I think there is so much naturally that we can do to to help us, you know, live with the results of being in a sinful fallen world, um, being, you know, flesh that is decaying and um, just praying that the Lord would really provide that, you know, just provision and, and guidance and, and healing there for you. Absolutely. Um, June, you prayed some months ago for the Holy Spirit to touch the heart of my partner. This week, he asked me to buy him a Bible. I did. He kept telling me he loves his Bible and reads it each day. Amen. Praise God. Right. Growing in that that discipleship, that true knowledge, right? That the Lord would just pursue and, and guide and bring that. Absolutely. Praise God. That's amazing. Katie, please pray for my mom. Karen, we found out she has stage two uterine cancer. She's going to the Minnesota Mayo Clinic next Thursday for a hysterectomy. Praying it won't, it hasn't spread outside the uterus. Absolutely praying for you guys. Yes. My mom just had that in her arm. Um, so it, so it was but it kind of same thing where it was like, did this go to the lymph nodes? Where all has this gone? Um, so we've been, um, yeah, it's, it's scary. So I'm glad she's getting in there and she's going to get everything done, praying for the surgery, the process, the healing, all of that that goes with it. And then praying that it hasn't spread out of there. Absolutely. And just for your whole family, that this will be something that again, just in everything we go through, Lord, use this to bring glory to your name, grow us in this and bring us to this, you know, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So Cynthia, my, my personal wise, I just don't like saggy belly skin, right? <laughs> I mean, do any of us? I don't think so. Um, and I think it is hard, um, you know, with some of those things. And I think it's, there's nothing wrong with wanting to, you know, be healthy and be fit, you know, whatever, but it's, it's, I think that heart reason of, you know, why, you know, why do you need to do this or need to do that? You know, is that the best? And then I think too, is that the best use of your resources? You know, sure. Some of these things would be great, but is that the best way for me to use my resources? Um, you know, can I be doing more naturally to improve my health and improve my whatever um, versus going and, and doing something? So I think it's, you know, it's really at the end of the day, you have to come down and be like, all right, Lord, you know, where, where should I be? What should I be doing? You know, what truly do you want to um, want to see? You know, what is the best testament, you know, of my life? And, and, you know, you have to make that decision between you and the Lord and, and see where you're at. You know, only only we are responsible, you know, when we stand before the Lord one day and give an account for what we did, you know, what were our motives? Because there won't be any hiding it he knows, you know, so sometimes we go, oh, you know, I, you know, we, we think we know what our motive is, but it's like, yeah, we know we're fibbing a little bit, I'm not saying you are, but just saying like, when you go through that, we have to be honest with ourselves and be like, okay, is this really why I'm doing it or what my purpose is or what I think the best thing is, you know what I mean? And so that's between you and the Lord, you got to answer that and be able to, all of us have to be able to stand firm on our own two feet when we stand before the Lord and give our accounts. Right. And so, you know, some of us might look at something and go, yeah, I absolutely feel like, you know, I could stand before the Lord today and give my account on that. Praise God, then that's amazing, right? That's between you and the Lord. If you feel like you could do that, okay, what do I know? I'm not you, you know, I, I don't know. Um, 
But I think to just say that things are across the board sinful, like just, you know, we're not walking around with like our, our Bible gavels, just wrong, wrong, wrong. You know what I mean? On certain things, it's like, well, for some people, I would say, yeah, it is sinful because the root of it is very self-centered. For other people, it could be a great thing. Um, but you have to you have to discern through that. Um, Stephanie, let's also lift up your friend from church. She is mad at God. She's feeling really down and feels alone. That is so hard when you see that. I know. Um, I know sometimes it can be so, so hard when things in life happen. You know, people either turn to God or from God, it seems you know, either blaming him, which I think is always kind of interesting. Sometimes when we watch it and it's like, how is it God's fault? Um, but praying for you as well, you know, to, to be an encouragement for this person that the Lord will continue to soften her heart and work through all of that. Cause it is so hard. And for your friend, Debbie, she asked for prayers for peace in her home. So absolutely praying for that because I think, um, when our homes don't have peace, we don't feel that, um, it makes it so difficult, not impossible, but difficult to really work through and grow in any of the areas when we just feel the peace is missing. Peace is so important. And that's why I think as, you know, as women, whether you are home full time, you're out of the home, whatever situation you are, your, your role to be a homemaker doesn't change regardless. And I think, you know, if there's one thing that I would hope that maybe, you know, our channel here, the community here, you know, could provide would be to really show what an honor, a true genuine honor it is to keep the home, to build up our homes. Because when our homes are rooted in the truth of the Lord, they have that sense of peace and comfort and security and all of those things that I think we're all searching for. It really makes all of our lives so different right? All of us, you think of, you know, the type of home you grew up in, the type of home you have now, you know, you kind of wade through those things and it really affects who you are, how you see life, how you go about your day and how you pour into others. And when home is chaotic and stressful and there's just, you know, there, there's nothing positive that you have coming from it. It really does affect the person you are, how you go about life, you know, how you deal with situations. And I think when we as women understand that task that we've been given to be the keepers of the home, um, that is such a huge, huge, huge honor and what a responsibility it is that, you know, God has given us. And I think that the world has worked so hard to belittle that value. Um, I saw a reel the other day. I was just scrolling through Facebook, I don't know, or something, just kind of nothingness, Instagram, whatever. I don't even remember what it was. And it was this um, demonstration of this like retro kitchen. Um, it's like 1950s and it's this amazing kitchen and she's in there cooking and literally everything is set up to be just so efficient, so wonderful. You know, she's got these great drawers right on underneath that hold the flour. And so like everything's just right there. And it's, and they were like, man, talk about kitchen from the future. Like where did, what happened to this? Where did these kitchens go? Because this would be the most amazing thing in the whole wide world. And somebody commented and they said, feminism, that's where these kitchens went because the world wanted you out working and not at home. And so now, you know, we don't, we don't, because this would make life so much easier if all of us just had this as like our standard kitchen, man, like making healthy from scratch meals, you know, would be a breeze, you know, all of these things you'd be set up for success. But I think it's so interesting that we do live in a world where we've been sold this lie of feminism, that that's where, you know, get out and, and make it in the world. And that's what'll make everything so much better. And that's not the case, you know, whatsoever. It's left most of us with broken homes, overstressed, exhausted, miserable, you know, all this. And it's like, how, how is it that what God says is so old fashioned and so outdated, but yet it brings peace and comfort and honor and, you know, all these other wonderful things. But yet we go into all this that's left us all frustrated, broken homes, maxed out, you know, whatever. Like, how is that the better option? I don't, I don't really see how that makes sense. Um, but it is so amazing when it's like, okay, so how about we start setting ourselves up for success? Because we see that when we have a home of comfort and peace and love and truth, you know, and all of these things that like, we're all set up so much better. 
our marriages, our children, grandchildren, right? Friends, family, community, all of that flourishes when homes are, you know, solid and family units are restored, you know, look at that difference. Um, okay, Ruth, big prayer request here. Let's be praying for her son, Matthew, her daughter-in-law, Christy, and the grandchildren, Grace and Noah, who do not believe in God or Jesus Christ. Absolutely praying for all of them, Ruth, and that the Lord would pursue them and bring them to truth for, you know, you to continue to pour into them and be that, you know, again, that just by your conduct, they see what it means to love the Lord and live in truth. And so praying for all of them, absolutely. And for you, that the Lord will continue to strengthen you as you continue to pray for them and go through that. It's so difficult when we have loved ones. Um, any of you who are in um, marriages that your, your spouse is not a believer or isn't, you know, truly walking in the ways of the Lord, praying for all of you, because it is so difficult. Um, so absolutely, Ruth, we will continue all to lift them up in that. Amen. Yes. Yeah. Our, I don't know. I think our life is just so wonderful and it's been hard to say that lately. Cause I know even for us and our family, we've had many not wonderful things happen, um, within the past, even few days. And sometimes you just want to give up and be done and be like, well, fine. <laughs> like, what's the point? <laughs> this is all miserable. But I think it's that and just saying, you know what, I don't have to be defined by the world or the brokenness or the struggle or the whatever. If God saw me so worthy, right? We've got Passover coming up the end of this month, you know, we think of, you know, just the sacrifice of the Lord, everything going on. It's God saw me valuable enough to give his one and only son, you know, for me, for my husband, for my children, you know, for all of that. And it just, the, the weight of that propitiation is just, you know, so much to hang on to and something we should think of every single day. And I think for me, it's thinking of that and studying through that, right? We just finished reading the Bible in 90 days. I think some of us are still working on it over in the group, but, you know, going through all of that, reading all of that, finishing Revelation, you know, looking at all of that, it's like, man, what further encouragement do we need to make the most out of each and every day than that, you know, sitting outside and, you know, I've been reading books. Actually, I'm always awful at that. I always say I want to read books and I never do, but I've been, we've been going to the library. And so I've been checking out stuff and like purposefully sitting down and, you know, doing stuff, but just sitting outside and listening to the birds, you know, feeling the breeze, seeing the flowers sprouting. I've been gardening, you know, doing stuff with the sheep, just tending the property, things like that. And it's like, man, there is so much beauty in our world today and not, not the stuff that's bought, right? Not the stuff that's manufactured, but just when you strip down the, the raw, natural, you know, elements of the Lord that we have all around us. And it's like, man, our girls love it. I love, you know, showed in the video today, but I love, I was a wedding designer for way too many years, probably, but, um, I love setting a beautiful table. It's my favorite thing in the whole wide world. And um, I try to do it as often as I can. And so in this whole, we're resetting our lives. I'm like, you know what? Absolutely a beautiful table is what we're doing. We don't really use overhead lights in our house. We have some lamps, very oh, two, three rooms in our house even have overhead lights, three maybe four. Um, but we don't use that. We have a few lamps when it gets dark outside. I want it to get dark in the house. Um, having candles lit at dinner, our girls have been taking turns. My girls all grew up with me being a florist. So our kids can't help, but see flowers and foliage and start designing bouquets. Um, it's, it's just something we all do. And so now that flowers are coming back in, um, Virginia, our daughter who just turned 11, she's been, our azaleas are all in huge, we have huge azalea bushes lining our house. And she's been going out and just making me these beautiful, huge azalea bouquets. And so being able to put candles on the dinner table, flowers, you know, I got plants everywhere, you know, we're bringing again, just those creations or even just going and we sit outside and eat dinner some nights, just being surrounded in that and seeing that beauty and taking the time to say, you know what, I could just slap dinner together and be like, ah, here we go. We're all sitting in front of a screen and eating it or whatever, or we can put all that away. 
we can light a candle, we can put flowers on the table or go sit outside or have a picnic or whatever and just like soak in that beauty of life, I think is so important. And when we kind of lead that charge and say, you know what, this is what we're doing today. <laughs> you know, like I'm going to tackle this stuff, you know, I'm going to get rid of all the things that are stressful, the things that were, you know, that's why I sat down with my little booklet and I was like, what are the things I don't know if you guys got this one, but I sat down and was like, what are the things that I can't stand? The things that like we need to have less of, <laughs> like I, I can't do this anymore. It's driving me crazy. Let's strip all those out. Now, what are those things that we want to have more of? I want candlelit dinners, right? I want hikes out in nature. I want just time being out playing together, you know, different things that are so meaningful. Like let's pack our lives full of those meaningful, lovely, beautiful, you know, adventure, explore, grow, serve, like let's fill life with those things. And I know there's, you know, there's the realities of life we got to deal with. I get it. Toilets got to be scrubbed. I got it. Right. Like there's things that have to happen, but like, I want to take those things that like, eh, you got to do it and really like maximize the efficiency and minimize the quantity of so that we can fill everything else over here with like the beautiful and sitting down, you know, we've loved it. Just put on soft music, light some candles. Um, I told you all the other day, I fell in love with those lamp bergers. So like our house smells delicious. We got the windows open, you know, you like all of these little things that you come in and it's like, thank you, Lord. I have today and I can make the most of it and soak it all in. Yes, Ruth, right? Like the mountains, valleys, sand, ocean, flowers, trees, animals, right? Like all of the things, but like slowing down to really soak in those things and continue to focus on the things that are so lovely and so beautiful and all of the little things that God weaves together for us, regardless of how much money's in the bank, how much struggle is in relationships, how much brokenness is in the world, how much stress is everywhere. You know what I mean? Like instead of focusing on those things, say, yeah, those things are going to exist. There's nothing I can do about that, but I don't have to be defined by that because I can go this direction and say, wow, Lord, look at what you've given us. Look at the opportunity. Look at the adventure, the beauty, the blessing that is in everything. And I love that even the more, you know, you start to do those things, you're going to start to see it affect those around you. You know, I love setting a table and, and pulling out the pretty, you know, my china comes from the thrift store, y'all. Like I paid like 20 or 30 bucks for the whole set. And it's, I've got like a bajillion pieces. Like, you know, none of it is like financially, you know, anything like to take to the bank, but you know, it's, it's little pieces like that, that pulling that out just feels so lovely. And the next thing I know, the kids are now like racing each other to see who can make the biggest bouquet. You know what I mean? So now I've got flowers all over the house. I put little bud vases I've collected from thrift stores in all the bathrooms and by all the sinks, you know, so you just have those, those little doses, but it's those little tiny things that I know even talking with our kids are like, I'm always going to remember this. Like, I think things that even my girls, they're young, but things that already they're kind of carrying into, you know, this will define the type of woman that they become. And so seeing those different things, it's like, I'm really cool. I find it really cool. You know, I find this really neat to, to focus on those areas that will have an impact somewhere down the line and continue to build them up, you know, to be focusing on, you know, God's way and what is truly beautiful in life. And it doesn't have to look like the world or be a certain, you know, financial value or whatever, but this is where your worth comes from. And this is where you can really grow yourself and make the most of. And um, I think seeing that is just really awesome. And um, being able to, to share that and connect with others, you know, where we're all going, yeah, like God's beauty, you know, the blessing of life, the just adventure of everything around us is something worth um, pursuing in whatever capacity and season of life that we're currently in. We have our hardships. We have our difficulties. Absolutely. But they don't have to define us. They don't have to, to tear us down. And we can continue to you know lean on the fellowship of believers that we have and continue to build and grow you know, from that. And I think it's something that really does, you know, Help and encouraging one another as we go through whatever it is that life is throwing at each and every one of us. So I know it's a little, you know, a little rambly, but um, 
I don't know. I think it's important. And I think it's, you know, you guys are such a blessing to us and we really do appreciate, you know, getting to to share and connect with you all and to do all of these things and, and grow in all of this. I think it is so, um, so special, especially in a world that is so backwards and wants to see, I think just so much broken down. It's nice to, to still be able to find those out there that are like, you know what? I don't want to do it that way. <laughs> I want to grow and be encouraged and, you know, find the positives and not just be torn apart by the, ugh, <laughs> the yuckiness of life. Um, no, I'm so glad you hopped on. Hey, yeah, it's so great just to get to, you know, and I think this is fun. Um, I appreciate you all. You know, I think it's fun to hop on, you know, but taking the time out of the middle of your day here, you know, each Wednesday and hopping on. But I appreciate you all for for taking a few minutes to hop on and say, hey, it's great to see you all and just be able to lift one another up. And um, I'm super excited. Like I said, we're going to. Um, Right now, I was like, you know, I, I want to put some stuff together. I'll go ahead and post it again, too. Passover is coming up here a um, uh, week after next. So super excited. Our family's kind of preparing for our Passover stuff. I will post those things because I know um, a few of you have messaged in kind of wondering um, how exactly we do Passover, what Passover is all about, celebrating Passover as a Christian. And so I'm um, absolutely sure that we're getting ready to plan our Seder meals. And um, it's such a, a fun week. We always make... Um, we always make fresh unleavened bread and things like that, which is super duper exciting. Yes. Even as a carnivore, um, we still always do that as it's a special time. And, um, so I'll be definitely sure to, to share, to share that stuff with you guys. And, um, I'm just going to keep, it's been so nice. Like I said, I'm going to record. So you guys will see it on tomorrow's video. I'm going to go tackle our kitchen today. So I start with the living room. Uh, I told you all, I'm like here in the booklet, right? Like write down every room in your house. We're just going to tackle this whole thing. We're going to super minimize, super clean, handle it all. And then we'll, we'll do the, the upkeep portion, but, um, I'm going to do it in the kitchen today. And then the goal is to do the dining room tomorrow. I kind of broke them up into two separate areas. So I'm excited to get out there today and I'm pulling everything out. <laughs> I'm deep cleaning it. And then we're assessing like, what do we actually use? What do I actually need to keep? Um, I don't know about y'all, but I feel like our kitchen somehow has just ended up so many things that like I just have, but they're not like ideally what I want to have or want to be using. It's just kind of like this hodgepodge of things that we've collected over the years. And I am so ready to like strip stuff out and be like, okay, what do we actually need? What do we actually use? I'm going to get the thing that's like the actual thing we need here and not just the like thing I've been hodgepodging for a while. Um, we have so much of that and it drives me a little crazy. So I'm excited to tackle all of that. So you guys will see that in tomorrow's video. But I thank you all so much for, for joining me today and truly lifting you all up, you know, here on the live. Those of you who are watching the replay later, just praying for each and every one of you. Appreciate you all for the prayers, um, the support. Again, if you guys, you know, continue praying for the family, we appreciate that. If you guys want to head over to Heavenly Mind at Home, I know so many of you have messaged in and asked how you can make a donation um, to Sabrina's family to help them get out here so she can get to her doctors, um, brain surgery, heart stuff. All of those things have to get tackled. Um, so if you go to heavenlymindedhome.com, just scroll down to the bottom. You can make a donation and everything that comes in goes straight to their family. Um, we're gathering resources for them to help them get out here. We've got a uh, beautiful fifth wheel trailer here on the property for their family to kind of have um, space here on the compound while they work on, you know, getting all their stuff, getting through all the medical stuff. So just praying for the Lord's will and all of that, and that we'll be able to get them out here soon, safely. And, um, um, get everything going in that. So I appreciate you all for that and, and those prayers and the Marceau family and everything they have going on and everybody here that we've been praying for this week and even here recently, there have been so many big prayer requests. And so just thinking of you all and continuing to pray as we're all facing all the things I know and um, really just praying that the stuff here can be an encouragement, right? To encourage and equip 
that's that's so important. And I think what we, in a world of of people making millions off of sharing cat videos, let's be the people that are like, no, we're gonna <laughs> we're gonna lift one another up and focus on those things that really do matter. So absolutely, Karen, we love you all. Thank you all for hanging out. Have a beautiful, beautiful rest of your day. And um, I'm gonna go tackle my kitchen. So y'all have to let me know what area of your house you're tackling and your your home redesign. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Awesome. Marie says, I wanted to share that I've been praying for my mother during the prayer gatherings for a while now. Yep. And your mom called me last night to tell you that both her cancers are gone. Praise the Lord. Absolutely. That is amazing. What a, an amazing praise to get to end this whole thing with. So praise God for that. And just what a blessing, what an answer to prayer. And i um, so thankful to see that. Um, for you all. That is amazing. Yes. Yes. Man, perfect note to end on. <laughs> That's fantastic. I'm so glad you got to get on and share here with us. That's wonderful. See, one day at a time. God's got it, right? He's working through all the things and his timing, his will. We just have to trust that process. All right, guys, I love you all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. I'll see you tomorrow as we clean out the kitchen. And then, of course, set a reminder every Wednesday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, we will gather and lift one another up in prayer. So have a wonderful day, friends. Yes, absolutely. Love you all and see you on the next one. Bye, guys.